بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلوات الله وسلامه على نبيه الكريم عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم تسليم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي my brothers my sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته that was a pretty pathetic response but I'll accept it anyways I know that I was placed at the beginning of today's conference and I am pleased to be the person who breaks the ice for all the other speakers that are to come insha'Allah ta'ala. As I was sitting there, I was thinking to myself, the first thing I'm going to say when I come up is that we should just let Shaykh Abdul Wahab continue, mashallah, tabarakallah, what he was saying was really nice. And then the last minute, I was just like, yalla, get off the stage, it's time to move on. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters, I only have a short amount of time with you. But what I really want us to learn today, insha'Allah ta'ala, is a recipe. When you think of your favorite dessert, and because as human beings, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us is we crave food, right? Who here craves food? Nobody? Who here is hungry right now? Okay, that, there we go. All right. Who here is looking forward to a break later on where you can go check out some of the restaurants in Markham? All right, there we go. So they didn't come here for the conference. They came here for the food, Sheikh, the GTA. You got to keep note of that. All right, so when we think of your favorite recipe or you think of your favorite dish, you think of your favorite food, you think of your favorite dessert, there has to be a process that takes place before you actually get that. So you're like, you know what, I'm craving a burger, and you're served the most awesome burger. That burger started somewhere long ago and turned into the burger that it is today. You think of, I don't know, your favorite dessert, something exotic, something you know, unique, and some person or people went through extremely hard work in order to, dis in order to develop this dessert into what is going to empty your pocket because your heart just longs for it. And so everything in life requires some steps, some process in order to receive the end result, in order to receive that goal that you're trying to attain. Now, every single one of us as human beings, we naturally like things and we naturally dislike things. Naturally, there are things that we love and we crave. And naturally, there are things that we dislike that actually become a problem for us in life. They become such a big problem that at times it creates friction between us. You all know very well that one of the biggest problems that we have within our own selves as Muslims, as believers, is the fact that we don't always see eye to eye. We have so much internal conflict amongst ourselves that we can't get past it. We are stuck in our own little areas and it's like, oh, you know, today there's a Miftah conference, so I'm not going to go to it because we live in the east part of the GTA, right? And then, oh, you know, this is happening in the United States. We're Canadian. We're not going down to the United States. And then the Americans are like, oh, there's a conference in Canada. Big deal. Who cares? We're not going to Canada. So there's friction between us all the time. And if you think that there isn't friction between us, Let's look at an example of how friction existed even within the lives of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Today we're going to focus on the first four verses of Surah Al-Anfal. That's it. The first four verses of Surah Al-Anfal. These four verses are a recipe for success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah talking about the battle of Badr and what happened to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum during that battle. He says, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الأنفال قل الأنفال لله والرسول فاتقوا الله وأصلحوا ذات بينكم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله إن كنتم مؤمنين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us how during the battle of Badr, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they differed. They had issues amongst themselves. And I'm not going to explain the whole battle, but what happened here was, first of all, it's the first encounter that's taking place between the Muslims and the Mushrikun after the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Secondly, the wealth that is being transferred in that caravan, a lot of that wealth 
belongs to the Muslims, right? Is the wealth of the Muslims. Thirdly, you have the Muhajirun from amongst the Sahaba, and you have the Ansar who are also amongst the Sahaba. And then you see a lot of other things. There were many Sahaba that did not want to go out. They were like, hey, wait a second, we thought we were going to get our wealth. And now we have to fight, we have to take up arms, we need to defend ourselves. And we need to claim back what is ours with force. And so the Prophet ﷺ divided the Sahaba. There were three camps, three groups of companions. There was one group of companions whose task was to look after the Prophet ﷺ, protect him, keep him safe. If anyone tries to attack, you're going to defend the Prophet ﷺ. The second group was a group of people that went to the front lines. They're the people that go and fight. You take up arms, you're going to go and you're going to make sure that you're going to attack the enemy. The third group of Sahaba, of companions of the Prophet ﷺ, were those that were sent forth to collect the gains, to collect the wealth, collect the booty, right? So there's three camps, three groups. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they differed. Immediately afterwards, there were some that were saying, you know what, this wealth belongs to us. The Prophet ﷺ sent us as a camp, as a group, to go and to claim this wealth. It's our wealth. The, the other camp or the other group said, hey, we were sent to the front lines. We fought for this. We put our lives at the, you know, on the front lines of this, of this battle. So we are the ones who are more deserving of this wealth. And then you had another group that said, hey, we were responsible for protecting the Prophet ﷺ. We are more deserving of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're asking you about the wealth, the monetary gains. As human beings, one of the biggest problems we have is that wealth divides us. Even within our families. You'll notice that when, and this is a, I, I live in Milton, right? And Milton is a very big uh, community of Muslims. Majority of our community is Desi, Pakistani, Indian. And you'll, you'll notice that if you just analyze your own families, when someone passes away, what is the biggest thing that happens after that? Like after everything starts to settle, the biggest dispute is wealth. Who is inheriting what from the person who passed away? To the point that it actually divides families. It destroys families. Siblings no longer talk to each other for decades. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah tells the Prophet وسلم, to tell the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, fear Allah. Be mindful of Allah. وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ Fix the problems, the issues you have amongst yourselves. And my brothers and sisters, if we look at these four verses, this is a recipe for success. And it begins with fixing ourselves. Cleanse our heart. If I want to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing I need to do is make sure that what's within my heart is clean. We all know stories of Sahaba radiallahu anhum who were promised the best of the hereafter simply because every single night they would make sure that when they went to bed, their heart was clean. Not clean from cholesterol and waking up in the morning and eating avocados, but clean from grudges amongst themselves. Clean as in, I see my brother, I see my sister, there's no issues. Someone comes and corrects me. You know, I made a mistake in the mimbur or, you know, I made a mistake doing something in the masjid and a community member comes and corrects me. I shouldn't be like, I'm writing that person off, never going to talk to them again. Who do they think they are to come and correct the imam? No. As believers, we accept the goodness and we purify our hearts. So the first step that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to take in order to be successful is to cleanse our hearts. And then he says, Anyone here a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Anybody? Oh, okay. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us something powerful. He says, 
Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to follow the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Part of his command is that we follow what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought to us. The best way to live, the best way to talk, the best way to walk, the best way to eat, the best way to sit, the best way to look, the best way to dress, the best way to think, the best way to worship, the, the best of everything we find coming from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah says, fear Allah, be conscious and mindful of Him. And I'll explain fear shortly, inshaAllah. He then says, cleanse your heart, obey Allah, and follow the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you claim to be believers. And we all raised our hands, so we all believe. The next thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is He begins to describe who we are. Allah begins to describe the believers. He says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Allah says, the believers in Allah, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ They are they who when they remember Allah, when they think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they ponder and reflect over not only the verses of the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to us, but we ponder and we reflect over all of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our hearts begin to tremble. Ask yourself, when was the last time that you heard the Qur'an being recited and you shed a tear? When was the last time that a mountain of problems was in front of you and Allah removed it for you with ease and you shed tears? When was the last time that you felt some emotion within you sincerely and solely because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And use that as your gauge to now try to figure out where do I stand with my Creator? Am I actually a person whose heart begins to tremble? Or do I hear the Qur'an and I play it in my car and I recite it myself and we go to the masjid where the imam's recitation is the best and we stand there for the whole month of Ramadan, we stand there and we brag to everyone, we post it on Instagram, we Snapchat it, we TikTok it, we put it all over social media, letting people know I'm at so-and-so masjid praying behind so-and-so imam. We even go the distance to say, I'm in Mecca, at Masjid al-Haram, in the front row, facing the Kaaba. People take pictures and say, there's nothing between me and the Kaaba. And I prayed the month of Ramadan behind Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so. How many tears did you shed? How many times did our heart tremble? How many times did we stop and ask ourselves, where am I in my deen? Have I fixed the problems between me and my sister? Have I fixed the problem between me and my sister, my brother? Have I stopped to reflect upon the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to me? Because the Qur'an is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That's every single one of us. الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Our hearts should tremble when we hear the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا when you hear the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His greatness, His words being mentioned, our iman increases. And that's why when we come to events like this, we find we came as a person and we leave as another person. We came looking for benefit and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does benefit our sitting at the gathering. Because the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being recited. And so our iman increases. Now that my iman is increasing, what do I need to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وعلى ربهم يتوكلون. Now I need to trust Allah. I want you to take a second to think of your biggest fear right now. What is your biggest fear? Just take 10 seconds and think of your biggest fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just gave you a recipe to tackle that fear. Your fear is probably something to do with wealth if you're an adult. Your fear might be something to do with your children if you're a parent. Your fear might be something to do with school and grades if you're a student. Your fear might be something to do with society if you go to schools and it's June and it's Canada, right? You have so many fears in life. There's so many things that we are trying to get past. So many things I want to do and achieve, but I'm scared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the more you come closer to Allah, you purify your heart, you remember Allah, you recite His ayat, you come closer to Him, your iman increases. Now put all of your trust in Allah. Put all of your trust in Allah. That Allah will take care of my biggest fears. Allah will look after the problems that I'm faced with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never abandon me. Allah created me, brought me into this world. I did not know how to breathe, but shaitan came and pricked me and I started to cry. And all of a sudden, I'm breathing. Allah taught me to breathe. Then because I was crying, my mother held me and she said, you know, what? we got to get this baby to stop crying. He's just constantly crying. We need to do something. What does the mother do? Feed the baby. The baby is drawn near to the mother. How does the baby know to eat? How does the baby know to suck? How does the baby know to swallow? How does the baby know to breathe? How does the baby know to cry? How does the baby know who the mother is and who the father is? How does the baby know when it's time to stand, when it's time to walk, when it's time to talk? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He programmed us. Remember, if we got through those stages when we couldn't even clean ourselves, Allah took care of it. Don't we think Allah will take care of us today? Absolutely. Absolutely. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in verse number three, He now tells us what we need to do. He says, believers in Allah, those who claim to be believers, He says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the believers, they are the ones who establish their prayers. You establish your prayers, why? Because you trust in Allah. And because you trust that Allah will fix your problems, you know you need to submit to Allah. First, Allah tells us, to clean our hearts. Then he tells us, believe. That's in the heart. You're not doing anything. I believe. Khalas. But now Allah is saying, you can't just believe. You need to do something. Activate yourself. So he says, الصلاة, Establish your prayers. Many of us as Muslims, we know we have to pray. Many of us as Muslims, we say, I do pray. But how many of us as Muslims miss Fajr? Just saying. How many of us miss or are late for our prayers on a daily basis. Establish prayer. You want that mountain moved? Trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the problems, take care of the fears, but know at the same time that you have to do something. We have to do something. He says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. Don't fear loss of wealth. Spend it. Save it. Invest it. Use it. Give it to your family. Be wise with your wealth. But take a portion of your wealth or take a portion of your health. Take a portion of your time. Take a portion of your expertise and share it with someone else. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ and to conclude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What? Those are the true believers? They are the ones who truly believe? Yes. 
Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّا لَهُمْ دَرَجَاتٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the reward. He will take care of everything. We need to activate ourselves. We need to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us and put our full trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of our children, will take care of the finances, will take care of the school and the grades, will take care of our interactions with one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after everything for us, but we need to begin by submitting ourselves in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lahum darajat. You'll have high levels of paradise. عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَمَغْفِرَ Every single one of us wants forgiveness. Every single one of us makes mistakes. We all want to be forgiven. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ And every single one of us wants to be wealthy and successful and beneficial and useful and, and proper in this dunya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us and bless us with that rizq, but we need to start somewhere. Never forget these verses. Never forget that the Sahaba differed. Never forget that they submitted and they left everything aside. And they fully listened to the Prophet ﷺ and submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were successful. And we too can be successful. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakala nabina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته